Hey everybody, I'm Mark Edward Lewis with Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most basic plugins that you're going to need in any post production mix process in Adobe Audition, and that's its various stereo reverbs and how to use them. Let's roll. We're here in Adobe Audition, and if you've never used Adobe Audition, I invite you to come to cinemasound.com and stream our Adobe Audition 1, 2, 3 product. It'll take you from, hey, I've never used Adobe Audition, all the way to having great facility at the program and creating great production value for your productions from the department of the redundancy department. Anyway, we're here in the timeline for Adobe Audition. Here's a nice little clip. Let's check a look at it. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Now, a lot of people add reverb to clips, which you can certainly do in any nonlinear editor. You would do that by selecting the clip and going to effects and reverb, or you can go to the effects rack here and clip effects and do the same thing. But that's always, always, always a mistake. And here's why. And I haven't been so strong about this, but with a clip, you never want to add reverb to a clip. Here's why. We're going to do this just for fun, clip, Reverb, we're going to use the studio reverb, which we're going to talk about in a second. Now, this is on the clip, not the track. We're going to make this a nice big long reverb just so that I can uh, show you what I'm talking about here. We'll make it very wet. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7 changed all that. Did you hear it? Notice this last line. It changed all that. See how the end of the clip is also the end of the reverb? It just Cuts it straight off. And just about every nonlinear editor does the same moronic thing. Changed all that. It's not that it's a problem with the DAW or the NLE. It's just, you know, how else are they supposed to keep audio going once the audio is clipped and cut? So we never want to do this. So if we're not going to put this on a clip, then how do we put it on a track? Well, uh, you could put it on the track itself in which you're playing the clip, but that's usually a bad idea as well because if you've got a lot of tracks, a lot of dialogue, you're going to want to use that reverb setting uh, for with multiple tracks, which means you have to add a whole bunch of reverbs on every track, takes up too much CPU power. So we want to use what's called a bus. To create a bus, we're going to go multi-track, tracks, add stereo bus track. It puts it here. We're going to call the stereo reverb bus. And then we're going to go here to the sends. We're going to go to send number one, S1 none. And we're going to say, please send it to stereo reverb. Now, well, we hear nothing. And so we'll go to the mixer page and see why. Aha, that's because the send is down. So we hit Alt, hold Alt or uh, Option, click, and it brings it to zero dB. And now... We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. It will send it to here. We'll unmute it. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. And there they are both. Now, here we will add the reverb to the track itself. We're just going to use that studio reverb. The Studio Reverb is the most efficient on um, CPU resources reverb that Adobe Audition has. It's an algorithmic reverb. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Which is super nice. Now for us, this is a really easy to use reverb. Um, we'll start at the bottom. And the first thing we want to do when we do busing like this is turn the dry signal off. We're already getting the dry signal here from the channel itself. We're assigning it to the bus and getting the reverb, which we want 100%. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Cool. And then we'll go up, uh, actually, now we'll go back to the top. We have room size. How big is this room? We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Versus how a big room? We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Now, it has the same decay. It just has a different feeling because the decay time is here. Right now, it's two and a half seconds. We can make it really big, 10 seconds. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... Which you could never do if you put that on a clip. And we can make the room size really small. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. And you can hear how it kind of gets a little grainy and funny, which it should, because no very small room should last. Uh, a reverb should last 10 seconds. So we'll keep it somewhere here in the middle. We'll leave the reverb time at about, yeah, three or so seconds. Early reflections relates to the kind of echo and short delays that happen in any kind of room. Um, and these are predominantly the reflections that we would use if we were doing a straight ambience kind of thing. So let's see here. If we want the early reflection to be strong, let's see. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. You know that kind of ringy? But the D7 changed all that. That's what those are if we turn them off? We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Yeah. Sounds like it's in a, a small room within a larger room. Then the width is stereo. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. You can hear that if you have headphones on. But the D7... Very, very, very wide. We'll just leave that there. 
And then high frequency cut. How much of these high frequencies do we want to have removed? We'd proven we could take on the Klingon. Very dark room. Same with low frequencies. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Now we turn that off and lots of lows. Bring it back. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. And then damping and diffusion are two different things. Damping is sort of like a high frequency cut, but actually works on the algorithmic level, not just an EQ. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. As opposed to off. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. You can really hear that in the sibilance. And then diffusion, how much banging around, uh, interacting with each of the walls of this room is this sound going to do? We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Versus none. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Sort of a subtle effect on this setting. So that's kind of what happens here in the studio reverb. Let's go back to the um, track menu, the editor. Let's listen to another one. Oh, wait, that's the track. Let's go here. This is the reverb we want to use. Let's try a different one. So that was the studio reverb. Let's go up to the top. We've already talked about the convolution reverbs in a different video on this channel. Let's go to the full reverb. And something interesting happens when you try to pull this up. First of all, it takes a long time. And you'll notice over here a red bar. Red bar means that it's very difficult for Adobe Audition to play this in real time. It's a very complicated mathematical reverb, a big CPU drain, but it sounds great. One of the ways we deal with this is we uh, do what's called a pre-render. Now, let's see if we go to effects. Unfortunately, we just see, yes, we do not have pre-render on buses. So that kind of makes this a difficult reverb choice to use. And in fact, what I'm going to do just to demo it for you is put, actually put this on the track itself so that we can pre-render it. All right, so let's, let's instantiate the full reverb. We're going to go full reverb like this. Takes it a while to come up. But there's the default. Of course, you have all these great presets that are under here. This, all this great stuff. You can see here. Uh, you have reverb settings and coloration, which is really cool. It allows you to change the EQ in a really detailed way of the reverb. Reverberation, you have decay time, which we've talked about before. Pre-delay time has to do with how long will it take before the reverb actually takes effect. In fact, let's, we have these sliders too, which are cool. Let's bring up the overall reverberation. And it's going to pre-render here. There it goes, right there. Going to make its little burn for the first time. Do, do, do. Once it does it once, it usually goes a lot faster. There we go. And then uh, let's make the pre-delay time really long so we can check that out. Go ahead and burn. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Right, and now let's make it zero. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... So it actually allows the reverb, with pre-delay on a little bit, it allows the direct signal to kind of live before that reverb shows up, which is super cool. Um, in terms of clarity, it really, really helps. All right, now to diffusion. Diffusion we've talked about is sort of how much is this sound banging around. Perception is in terms of how absorbent is the room that you're in. Is it padded and, and non-reflective? Or is it highly reflective? Let's go to a full re reflectivity and see how we do here. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. As opposed to absorbent. Pre-render. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Very different timbre. And then under here we have the early reflections. This is that sound that, um, you know, r that sort of bangs around before the reverb comes back to us, especially in small ambient rooms. In fact, if we want to have a small amb ambient room, we turn up these early reflections, turn down the reverberation and then have the room size, this is in meters, by the way, it's cubic meters, uh, move around. Um, but for me, one of the most powerful things that I love about this plugin is that you can set the reverb based on room size. And once we click this, these go grayed out. And as I slide the room size about, you can see that the actual room dimensions change. So I can have a four by six by three meter room, which of course you know is 24 times three is 60, 72. 72 cubic meters, oh, it even says so right there. Perfect. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... And that's a pretty close approximation of a semi-absorbent semi uh, 72 cubic meter room. All right, but as you can see with the full reverb, we don't really use this that often because it takes a lot of processing power, as you can see. Um, and we kind of have to wait around, and we don't like waiting around, even with pre-render on. But let's look at another reverb. That was the full reverb. Let's look at the regular reverb. Also notice this is a red bar, but takes much less processing, but still quite a bit. You have all the things that we're used to, absorbent, reflective, the diffusion, pre-delay, decay time, and we have the dry, wet, and we, what I forgot to mention before was the sum inputs, which means that if you have a stereo signal, 
you can send that to the reverb and have them process individually left and right, or you can have them turned into mono and then have the reverb create the stereo field. We'd proven we could take on the Klingon. And these presets really come in handy here. Handy here. Let's see, pumping reverb. Let's try this. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... And what you're hearing there predominantly is a 200 millisecond pre-delay. If we make this zero, check out the difference. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. It's a big, big difference. And notice how much faster this reverb responds with the pre-render on. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Let's look at another one. Uh, that's reverb studio reverb. We've already looked at surround reverb. We looked at a different video, video and convolution. Both of these are convolution. Actually, these are all the reverbs. We'll go back to studio. Again, not a red bar. This is the basic one that we use for studio, uh, for, sorry, for stereo reverb. If it's not convolution oriented, it's, you know, really awesome to use, really easy to use, takes a very little processing power and you're good to go in post. If you found this video useful at all or any of the hundreds of videos that we have here on the Cinema Sound channel, please subscribe and come visit us at cinemasound.com where hopefully the hundreds of blog posts and educational products that we have can get you the production value that you've been wanting, that Hollywood production value into your production. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're